I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. Uh, so today's creatures, plural, uh, creatures. ambiguously came about in the 1500s. They are also related to a past episode. They roamed the Philippines. One is goaty and the other is birdie in appearance. And they are still seen today. So I'm going to assume it's related to the Aswan. Correct. Because that was the Philippines episode. Yes. Um, goaty and birdie. Goaty and birdie. So is it the greatest of all time cryptid? No. I just learned what that meant a few days ago. I had really? to ask someone. Yes. I, I thought I explained that to you at one point. You you m- Maybe? That's a solid maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because cause, uh, there's a, whatchamacallit, a, uh, um, there's a goat simulator release on the Nintendo Switch right now. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> I had to turn away from the mic to burp. Um, <laughs> Not to cut you off. I'm sorry. I just got a text. And uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I might need to go see a gastroenterologist. You know, a booty doctor. <laughs> oh. All right. Episode done. That was a good one. Don't hey, know what the crypt it was, but that was it. That was a good episode. It was a good record. Oh. Um, I, I have literally no idea. Uh, I was going to guess, because I saw your post on Twitter about yes. brooms. About brooms. I went into a deep broom hole, and we'll, we'll yeah. talk to that about that later. Well, I was going to guess Fiddlesticks, the League of Legends character. No. Is he based on anything? He's just a scarecrow. Oh, okay. It was, it was, it was more of a joke because he's like made out of broom-like materials, and he kind of looks like a broom. Yes. Fiddlesticks, that was a... I, I was talking to one of our mutual friends yes. recently about that about that game, and I was like, there's a part of me that wants to go back and play League of Legends, and then I think about it, and I remember how it was 30-minute matches to an hour-long matches, Yeah, and I if, if, if things went wrong, it was just a awful experience for an hour of your life. You... And I don't have that. I don't have an hour of my life to waste on awful it's experiences. It's the kind of game where you can mess up in the first five minutes and the next 45 minutes or are you just sitting there taking it? Yep. Like, that's just how yeah. that game goes. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I kind of fell out of love with the MOBA genre yeah. in general. It it doesn't really appeal to me. But no. anywho. Oh, actually, I will say that uh, Overwatch has a kind of MOBA-ish vibe to it. Ish. I can see that. Yeah. Um, I like Overwatch, but that's a different story. Yeah, no, that was a fun and I have. I, I also haven't played Overwatch in like two years, but whatever. Nobody has. No, people definitely do. There's an Overwatch league at Marist College, and I know that because I I'm friends with the coach. Oh, okay. <laughs> the coach. Of... Anywho, uh, yeah, I don't uh, know what the script it is. All right, so before I tell you what we're talking about today, it is a continuation of an old episode, episode 33, way back in May 6th of last year. I don't, my, my brain, Brandon, I feel like I've lived a decade these past four months, so that might as well be uh, 11 years ago to me. All right, so, so to get you back into the mood and bump my mic, in yep. episode 33, Magic the Gathering Arena just came out. It was new. Is that... Is that right? Is that when, well? Well, that was when we started playing. That's we, that's when we had a trip to New York City, and we talked the whole train ride about magic. And that's when I learned about Cheetan. That's right. Yes. That's right. Okay. Uh, that's so this is 
35, you said? 33. 33. That's when I shared my Bigfoot theory that he emits EMI radiation and therefore causes all footage to be blurry. Okay, uh, okay. Using natural selection in the worst way to justify that explanation. Um, on the <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading the description of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got magic arena fever in the cold open and Brandon unveils his Bigfoot theory. Oh, is that really the description? <laughs> yes, that is literally the description. <laughs> On the way back, on the train ride back, you farted a fart that woke up sleeping people who then looked at me. And then when we got back, you shared that you had thought you pooped yourself. Yes, I did. I that, had thought I pooped myself. I actually remember that quite vividly. That is, uh, after that, that I a- shared that I did poop myself two weeks prior. <laughs> a year ago yeah it really feels like it was yeah. much longer than a year ago it feels I'm not like it's been lie. so much longer ago if we it, talked about feels... the original idea for this show uh which i forgot what it was uh and we do research and then just hand it off to the other person and it turns out i sniped episode 33's topic off your list yep. um and I also rem- i have not consulted that list in a very long time nope <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, honestly, the uh, we we both have found our niche, and the odds of us overlapping at this point are so low. It's it's very low. I have my it's... own list that's six pages long, and uh, it's somehow still crazy hard for me to find anything that has anything close to an episode's worth of relevant data on it. Uh, well, yeah. Usually, what ends up happening to me is I'll hit random on the Cryptids Wiki a bunch. Oh, is that reason. your strategy? <laughs> That's my strategy. I'll hit random on the Cryptids Wiki a-, a bunch. I'll find something that looks kind of interesting, and then I'll just per- I'll just pull on that thread and see what I can find that's related to it. Yeah. And that's usually how I find episodes. I mean, that's how I found uh, last week's episode, the, the Petrovisk one. Okay. Um, Petrovisk. Petro, is there anyone in Cherno? Um, but I do encourage anyone who hasn't already to go back and listen to episode 33 on the Aswang. Uh, in short, Aswang is a general term uh, for a variety of shape-shifting vampires from the Philippines that sometimes look like tired humans, hunger ghosts, floating dismembered heads with intestines that eat the babies out of pregnant women and steal penises. Um, I go into detail on Aswang on that I episode. I they stole the penises. They do steal the penises. Um... But today's episode, I'm going to talk about their pets. They have pets, John. Wait. Really? Yes. Oh. Let me, uh, bu- 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 let Wait, me they say... have pets? Yes. They were, I... I don't remember them being sentient. Move to, uh-huh, people can learn a file structure. Move to my drive. Move to broadcasted move yes copy is now in the folder so we're gonna start by talking about the sigbin um (laughs) okay okay uh one second one second the title of this document is the ass wing part two yes okay i just it's wanted to point that out (laughs) <laughs> well the original document for part one was just called ass wing uh well that remember the so okay this is going to be something that i don't think every single person who's listening to this show is ever going to remember okay. but you might remember it do you remember a show on adult swim called yes. assy mcgee oh is it the with the butt for a head yeah yes. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, it, it was a show <laughs> of all of all the shows it was one of them <laughs> yeah i mean well he smoked so he smoked cigarettes a lot on the show yeah and uh i want you to guess where he smoked those cigarettes out of his mouth yeah i guess that's one thing that's one way you can call it yeah He's, uh, uh, I'm looking at this again, and I forgot certain things. He wears sunglasses and has a gun. Uh-huh, yep. He was a, he was a detective. Yeah. He was a, he was a, a, a bad, a bad detective. His, his entire like... existence is, um, waist down. Uh-huh. The torsoless person. 
who's responsible for Assy McGee? Uh, like I want to know who, who Matt Herring, Harrigan. I was just gonna say we have IMDb. Uh, okay. Uh, he was the writer, producer, and executive producer of Space Coast Goes to Go, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, and the executive producer of Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law, and and the head writer of Celebrity Deathmatch, another I like show. All of those shows. Yes. Uh, he was also the creator of Perfect Hair Forever. Okay. Oh, okay. all great shows. Okay, yep. That explains a ton. That, that explains does. so much. Oh. <laughs> Perfect Hair Forever was so weird. I loved it so much, though. That was one of those shows that, like, there were certain people in our school who just loved it. Yes. Like, like loved it. Yeah, it was a Season, fantastic show. There was an epi- there were two episodes really uh, interesting. So there were three seasons of it that I did not know. Uh, season one, which was two thousand four to two thousand five. Season two, which was two thousand seven, and season bald. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which was twenty fourteen. I can't believe there was an episode of. Of Perfect Hair Forever that came out in, in 2014. <laughs> oh, uh, God. That is a great show. Um, so the Sigbin is said to walk backwards with its head lowered between its legs and to have the ability to become invisible to other creatures, uh, especially humans. It resembles a hornless goat but has very large ears, which it can clap like a pair of hands, and a long, flexible tail that can be used as a whip. The Sigbin is said to emit an nauseating odor. So, okay. There's a lot of stuff you just said. So basically just picture the goat from Goat Simulator. But it walks backwards with its head lowered between its hind legs. Between its hind legs, and it can clap its ears in, in its stinky boy. You're 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 completely glazing over the whip. Oh yeah, the tail can also be used as a whip. <laughs> it's, that uh, sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, it, it'd be a pretty terrifying thing to find. Like like, goats already are kind of creepy. I'm not. They've gonna got lie. the sideways pupils. I hate that. I hate. I hate that. the sideways pupils. Oh, I hate it. It. it whenever I see it, it gives me the the freak out a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. And you know what? The, the worst part is we were from a, it was, it's a suburb, I'll say. Because it's not, it's not like podunk middle of nowhere. No. But we were around animals a lot more than most people are because of the particular area of New York we live in. Oh, yeah. I never got used to goats. I've been around lots of goats. Yeah, never got used to goats. I was hanging out with goats last year. My family has a goat. <laughs> can we kill it i don't i don't think my niece would be very happy with that because she kind of uh, loves the goat <laughs> can we just can we just tell her to just look into its eyes do they have do, 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 do they have oh i just had a bad idea uh or are they called uh, scleral contacts for goats that make their eyes look like human eyes Oh, that would be awful. Like, I don't know how, but that's somehow worse than the rectangle eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's like a fish with human teeth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it... <sighs> once you start... Those are a thing. When, I know. Once you start layering human attributes onto creatures, it gets scary. I mean, donkey hands. <laughs> no, that's just erotic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Get that jelly. Get that donkey jelly. <laughs> I still love the fact that that whole... That was like a, a, a whole thing that popped out of a D&D session, and it retconned the entire story. Yeah. In a weird way. It took on a life of its own. It went from being a regular donkey to being a donkey that also had hands, and then to being a business associate. Well, that's because that's because the person who was playing that donkey played fast and loose of the rules. Yeah. And it was kind of something and, where it's like it's 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 safer for the group to just let that individual d- do their own thing. Honestly, the reason why I allowed it to happen was I was like, 
You know, if I try to fight this, this is just going to dissolve the... This is just going to cause him to not have interest in the game anymore. And most of his ideas are harmless. Harmless. In quotes. Harmless. Yeah, air quotes, harmless. But you know, it's not... There's nothing that's going to try to, like, break the game in a specific it, way. Yeah, not, it was not It was not a min-maxer. It wasn't a ruin the campaign. It wasn't a ruin the story type thing. It was a ruin my perception of the world type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time. Um, but I, I run those kind of campaigns, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> the whoopee cushion? <gasps> the whoopee cushion was amazing. <laughs> so, uh, if you think that no one has ever fallen for a whoopee cushion ever, you would be wrong. Yes, that was my previous belief. I, I thought so, too. But then it happened to me. <laughs> yes. When... An individual had an inflated whoopee cushion under their shirt, under the table, yes. for a long time. Oh, no. Th- so, this was like an hour or so into the session. Yeah. Never mentioned it. Never seemed suspicious. Just nope. had it. Long enough where you had to take a bathroom break. And then also, they slid that whoopee cushion under the chair cushion, but nobody noticed. No, nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. It was a surprise, it was... not just to you, but to everybody else. <laughs> it was. It was the only time in the history of ever that a whoopee cushion has been deployed successfully, in my opinion. Yeah, and it was done so artfully, and and it, everything went perfect. It was great. Oh no! It it was hilarious. <laughs> like you sit down, and it's not it's not that anybody thought you farted. It's that you sat down, and everyone was like, "Was that a whoopee cushion?" And then this individual yes. just crawls over laughing, and then we're like, and then everyone starts doing the like Charlie Day connect the 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 pins with red string, like whoopee cushion, and then it's oh wait, that was well done. Isn't it an hour into this game? How yeah. long was this person so, like everybody starts Who connecting? Who is Pepe <laughs> Sylvia? Yes. <laughs> oh, it was pretty great. Oh my god. Yeah, no. Um I wasn't thinking about the whoopee cushion, but I was thinking about how one player uh took the rule book very literally for D&D. Yeah, and the rule book literally says this is not a rule book. Yeah, yeah. Um and they wanted to like I had already decided that resurrection wasn't really a thing in my world because yeah. I thought that I thought that had cheapened the threats. Not yeah. that I killed you guys frequently or like put you in it, really It's not that we died frequently. It's that when um death in a game is no longer something that's as serious, it sort of it 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 ruins it, it. it, it, it affects how the players play the game and yeah. it cheapens um it cheapens dramatic moments yeah exactly um oh. i i personally uh, anytime i run a campaign i don't like resurrection plots and if there is a resurrection like the ability to resurrect a character uh it it's a comeback weird kind of thing yeah where I work with a player to make the character, like, I, I manipulate the character's actions, and we work together to kind of subvert the party, because I don't think, I don't think that that should be something that you can get for free, and I know that there's, like, oh, you gotta pay diamonds, and yada, 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 and all that stuff. It shouldn't be a monetary fee. It should be at a cost to the character themselves, Yeah, like I, the resurrection. I, I, this is, this is, this is John, the game developer... Uh, talking about role playing games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it has literally nothing. I, I, we this this started because we were talking about putting human icon human contacts in a goat's eye. You realize that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's just who we are. <laughs> Why does anyone listen to this show? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They they're the same kind of weird. That's true. Yeah. I, we we have we have a uh, I feel like anyone who listens to the show uh 
we can hypothetically get along with on some level. Oh, yeah. There's a very specific Venn diagram that has to happen for for this to even be slightly interesting. Oh, yes. <laughs> so so the fact that there are uh not you know not a f- it, like more than a few people that t- that tune in with with, with the old radio dial they have a very our, specific venn Brandon, diagram i'm not gonna lie our last episode launch uh was the best one we've had ever why i don't know like in one day we got more downloads than we have ever gotten it's more than mothman i don't what? know why yeah It's not more listens yet, but, like, in a single day spike, it's the highest since Mothman. Huh. Is it data fun? Uh, yeah. I like data. Yeah. Uh, so the the Sigmund comes out at night to suck the blood of its prey, specifically children, during Holy Week. It's an artsy, craftsy monster that likes to turn the hearts of children into amulets. Awesome! Yeah. Can I buy some? No. Do the Sigmund have an Etsy? Um, maybe. Probably not. Actually, I'm gonna Google. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up on Etsy. You can continue. Yeah. The uh, Aswang keep them in large jars. However, it is not the Aswang. Uh, is not just the Aswang that has power. Um, as an aside, I cannot find how the Aswang learned the skill of making jars uh, by Claire. Otherwise, nor how they learned how to use a kiln. But there are also families called Sigbinon who keep them as pets. Okay, Sigbinon. Yes. Are they humans? Uh, yeah, so they're human humans called Sigbinon who keep Sigbin as pets. Why? I'm happy you asked uh, like, that. Because, cause like, like, if their whole thing is making amulets out of child hearts, I mean, I guess I could see that. So there is that one cult that lives in uh, your basement. It, yeah, that, that that cult. Well, we don't we don't talk about that cult. All right, we just don't talk about that cult. They they live in boxes, okay? Because I have a bunch of boxes that I don't feel like breaking down to put in recycling. They live. Um, I have a cat condo in my living room that just keeps growing as packages arrive. Um, it takes up about <laughs> half the living room floor now. There's a I patio. Th- there's different le- been- levels. They're, they're, the, all the boxes are connected in some way. I haven't visited your home since that cat condo started, I think. Mainly because of, um, as uh, the Game Grumps would call it, the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Yeah. <laughs> um, But I've seen pictures of it, and it has gotten convoluted. Yeah, well, I'm not the only person adding to it now. Um, no, I know, I know. Yeah, I don't know if we talked about it before or not, but one day I was working from home and um my wife comes in and goes i think they need a patio i'm like um sorry i don't i feel like there's another first half of the conversation that i i was <laughs> I, I i i wasn't present for she's like the cats <laughs> and uh she's like how do i uh where i need tape and a knife i need to add a patio so, <laughs> You definitely told me about that, but it's still fu- <laughs> it's still very funny to hear. Yeah. It's great. There's several boxes that are connected. There's a patio. There's a there's a, a roof part. So I'm assuming that the 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 uh the Sigbinon are creating uh condos for their their Sigbin. Oh, probably. Yeah, uh, the, the, I was going to make a joke about a cult that doesn't have kids. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like the patio was very funny in oh, comparison. Yeah. Um, in the hands of the Aswang or Sigbinon, the Sigbin is said to have three primary functions. First, it can hunt down people you don't like and even drain the, their blood by sucking it from their shadows. Huh, I didn't know that's how that worked. Uh, apparently it is. Um, second, you can ride them. They are so fast Wait, that... It... But they're like the size of a goat. Yeah. Okay. Um, there, it's the Philippines. There, the, uh, I, I, I believe average height is probably less, uh, lesser than the height of you and I. I don't know if I want to go down the road, the route of uh, talking about other cultures and their physical traits in these times. Ah. Uh... So the goats are rideable. Um, okay, we'll we'll assume that they're because you can. There is a rideable goat in. I didn't. I didn't Legend describe size either. That's true. 
Yeah, so well, they could well, be a and, larger. Well, what is it? Uh, Twilight Princess, I think, has the rideable goats. Uh, I think. I don't know if I played Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess was the one that was on the GameCube and Wii. Yeah, I, see, I never had a GameCube or... I had a Wii, but I don't think I played Zelda on it. They did a weird thing in that game, too. So, okay, really brief game, video game history lesson because I can't resist. Um, so, Twilight Princess on the GameCube. Um, Link is usually left-handed. Uh-huh. For those of you who don't know. Um, historically, he's left-handed. Yeah. However... The majority of people are right-handed. And on the Wii U, on, on the, the Wii uh, version, Link became right-handed. On the GameCube version, he was left-handed. You want to know how they achieved that? How? They flipped the render. Oh. So the map is literally the opposite. Huh. Yep. The, the Wii version of the game... The map is the opposite direction. Everything huh. is opposite. Okay. If you look at the two maps, they're just opposite. It's yeah. the most bizarre thing ever, I, th- Weird. I think. Weird. I, I, I might be wrong, but continue okay. with the Sigmon. Yeah. So they are so fast that if you leave before a person and you are riding the Sigmon, you will arrive to the destination before that other person. So there's like, zoop, zippity zap. Fast, fast, fast. Um, and third, they're edible. They will gladly be served up for a meal, and you can even tell them what to taste like. They don't mind doing this because with just one of their bones or a piece of flesh, they can be restored back to normal by their owner. So you could have your Sigmund um, be willing to like be served up at a family dinner, and you could say, this week, your beef. And then they'll be, eat- when consumed, they'll taste like beef, and then you- they'll be resurrected um, and be fully restored back to normal. What? Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty pretty cool. Uh, so my they cats break, won't even do that for me. So they break the laws of. I want to say they break the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, as do many of our cryptids. Because energy can't be created or destroyed, right? So. But it can be turned into poop. But that's not created or destroyed. That's that's just. If it gets turned into poop, that that means. Th- <sighs> I don't want <laughs> to explain human digestion. Ah, uh, so aside from being delicious, it is said that they bring luck and wealth to their owners. Many of which are uh, witch doctors who use the Sigbin to collect healing oils and herbs and help people along with granting special healing powers to the doctors. Okay. Yep. Um, I found one account written by an Albert Rumboa. I I think I'm saying that right. Um, It happened in December of 2018 uh, on a holiday trip to visit their aunt, who lived in Kakar. I don't know if it's Kabu or Sabu. uh, Sabu. C-E-B-U. But upon leaving the airport, he apparently had a hard time finding... Uh, a tricycle driver willing to take him to that specific house. So uh, I know, I know what you're, what you mean by a tricycle driver. Yeah, because it's like it's like those things in times like in a uh, uh, Grand Central Park or, you know, in New York City where you have the person driving. Yeah, it's kind of like a tuk tuk. Yeah, yeah, like a tuk tuk. Um, but I'm imagining a man on a tricycle, like a child oh, like tricycle, an actual tricycle with like a wagon. And he like he like rolls up next to you, and he's like, "Need a ride?" And his legs are are monstrous. Yeah, oh. the man because the man has been working out yeah. as his main job. He could be using a real bicycle, but he doesn't because yeah. it's the principle of the matter. <laughs> so that's what that's that's what John is thinking about when you say that. Uh, continue. Okay. I'm very um, distracted right now by my my mind. Of your what mind a is going in, into to wonderful places. My mind goes uh, to places. Yeah. I don't know if I'd call them wonderful. So so the the tricycle driver was he had a hard time get, finding somebody because they were saying that they he said they seemed weary of that place and one um, even said that it would be better to stay in a hotel 
uh, until daylight before going to his aunt's house. Oh, that's so expensive. Do you know how, how expensive it is to, like, book a hotel room? So. Yes. Like I just booked a hotel room for two nights. But, like, like the day of. Oh, day of? Expensive. Probably a lot. That's yeah. ridiculously expensive. I mean, unless, like, right now it's probably easy. Let's be real. Oh, yeah. But, like, most of the time it's usually a pain. Especially if you don't want to be in, like, another dirty room style hotel room. Yeah, true. Um, at the time, he was 33, and he said that he thought the driver just got a kickback from the hotel. So he wasn't particularly worried about, like, people being weary. He thought more like, you know, it is possible. It was, you know, that's a very real... Uh, oh, that I got, scammed by, I got scammed by my taxi cab driver when I went to Canada. So that that's totally legit. <laughs> yeah. Um, he eventually convinced him... Uh, and by convinced, he said it was 500 pesos. Uh, it was a ride on an unpaved road. And um, as they passed a forest, the driver turned to him and asked why they needed to go at this time of night. Eventually, they hit a goat. He tried to help it. Uh, and he, he ended up needing to walk the very last bit to his aunt's house carrying this goat uh, mm. through the rain. Uh, he arrived... And his uncle, uh, Badong, greeted them at the door. And his uncle was very taken aback by the goat. And that's when his aunt saw it and shouted, Stick Ben! So, okay. Yeah? If, I, I'm still imagining the man with the tricycle and the huge legs. Mm-hmm. He hit a goat. Yes. If he was in a car, I could understand. But if he's in a, like, tuk-tuk style thing... You could just slow down. I mean, it's an unpaved road. Brandon, Brandon. I mean, they have brakes. Goat could have wandered out of a bush. Okay, okay, whatever, whatever. the The story is the story has me. This is forcing me to make make some leaps of logic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've already I've already accepted the fact that they turn children's hearts into amulets. You're pushing it with this whole hitting a goat with a, with a tricycle. <laughs> oh, you have a beautiful <laughs> sticky mind, John. Uh, oh, it's 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 dank in there. Yeah, uh, and then the goat started biting him. He claimed that in the light, it looked more like a cross between a goat and a kangaroo. <laughs> and it, Eventually, the creature ran out of the door, knocking the driver over on the way out. The lot of them stayed the night at the family's house. Uh, and the next morning, the arm was infected. Um, and then, th this is, we're skipping an entire day. Uh, when it started getting dark, uh, he said they could hear the Sigbin attacking the house. I, I mean, Brandon, if you get bit by an animal... There's a really good chance of infection. Like, especially a wild animal. Like, yeah. there's nothing supernatural about that. That That's just like, yeah, you got bit, dude, by, like, something that came out of the woods and who, who fucking knows what it's been eating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so, I think this... Uh because of some details I omitted from, from the story, may perhaps be a work of fiction, uh, or perhaps a family that was shaken by a heart goat and combined with folklore in a storm the next day were very afraid. Um, yeah, no, I, I... I think a hurt goat just bit a man. If this, is, if this story is true, I think a hurt goat bit yeah. a man, and then because it was a goat... Ran away. It ran away, and he got an infection because he probably didn't treat the wound properly. Yeah, it wasn't like Sigbin poison. Yeah, I don't... Well, I don't even... Did they even say that Sigbin are, like, poisonous? No, but the, there's... It's not incon inconceivable that, like, different regions would have different attributes that's, assigned that's, to, to, that. a, to a cryptid under one name. Because we've, we've seen that with other creatures. No, that's that's true. You're, you're right. I so, mean, like, the Thunderbird... I, yeah. Very like, oh, 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 I saw that. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, so for those of you listening, I just gave myself, I guess it's mm, not quite a Charlie horse, but, uh, ah, I hit my elbow real hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Yeah. I'm done with the Sigmin. Okay. This is, this is the Sigmin punishing me for doubting it. It is, which is perfect because the next creature that we're going to talk about, the next pet of the Oswong is the Whack Whack. I love that. The Whack Whack. It is a large vampiric bird um, that likes to snatch humans at night as prey. It is called Whack Whack because that is the sound that its wings make while it hunts. <laughs> the interesting thing about this sound is that the louder it gets, the farther the Whack Whack is from you. And as it gets closer, the sound becomes quieter. Hmm. That, that's definitely how sound works. That is definitely how sound works. Um, uh, I want to point out there is a phenomenal picture. Yes, uh, I'm leaving that for our uh, our our patron s- sponsors because yeah. <laughs> it's good. It is said that they have large talons. Uh, very large talons. They have very large talons, oh. and uh, when it attacks, it rips the flesh to get to its prey's heart. So this is not so both the Sigbin and the Whack Whack go go for the heart. Um, and its wings are also said to be very sharp. So, uh, I feel... So, here's the thing I have to say about the Whack Whack. Mm-hmm. Other than the fact that the way that its wings work is completely not how sound works. How so? <laughs> this dead air is great for podcasting. It is, it is, but... <laughs> In this particular case, you saying how so to, yeah, when it's closer, it's softer. When it's farther away, it's louder. That's not how sound works. Sound is energy. It's not like there's a, it's not like there's like a logarithmic curve that the sound gains. Like if you're using that logic, then we'd be hearing the whack whack moving all the time everywhere. Yeah. So, so one de- decil- um, decibels, sound power and sound pressure, they're, they're nonlinear. Non-linear. Non-linear. I know. Okay. Fine. Um, okay. They are non-linear. What, what I mean is they don't start quiet at the source and then get louder. They start loudest at the source and then get quieter. Let's agree to disagree. No! <laughs> Brandon, you work... Your job literally... Literally a portion of your job is sound, dealing yeah. with sound. You want to know something really funny? We had an acoustics engineer... Who uh, was, while not deaf, did require the use of hearing uh, aids. I'm not surprised. Can I say that? Just because... um, One time we had bees in the anechoic chamber. I think we talked about that last episode. Probably. I still think it's one of the funnier things that could happen. (laughs) Like, why is this thing that's supposed to have no sound just buzzing? (laughs) <laughs> huh why is the silent thing loud um oh oh th- the actual thing i was talking about beside yeah. the sound um going straight for the heart i don't think any creature does that for kills yeah they do it to show how badass they are uh, okay but it's easier to go for like the fleshy bits on the outside that are exposed like throats eyes Years, yeah, but they might want to just like Kalima their prey. Okay, you show me proof that they can Kalima, and that's just show me proof they can Kalima. But it's, okay, okay, <laughs> sure, can do. I've got some uh, some images of them being real and Kalimaing down below. Um, okay, cool. Although, uh, one idea about where the whack whack sound comes from is the sound from the tuko, a common gecko, that makes a sound uh, sim- similar to that at night. So go ahead and click on that little uh, that little link, the little linkaroo. Right. <laughs> right, very whack-wacky. Very whack-wacky. Yeah, it's very whack-wacky. Yep. Whack-wack. <laughs> whack-wack. <laughs> Sounds like a warrior or, or Wild Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, oh, oh, oh fuck, oh. while Luigi Kalimang just the fuck out of Toad. Holy cow. <laughs> 
And you know what? I, I'm, Toad's I'm heart now is, imagining is a one up. I'm now imagining. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm imagining that the. <laughs> so now I'm imagining that the walk walk is just Waluigi with wings like. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> And the the Sigmund is just uh, Wario, yeah, just like <laughs> running around, running super fast. <laughs> <laughs> Had some garlic. Um, so on the uh, Aswang Project website, which is also a set I used as the original source for like Aswang, which cover like the Meningal and and all these other like sub things that filter into the the umbrella that is Aswang. Mm-hmm. Um, so on the Aswang Project website. Um, one writer named uh, P.E.R.S. or per- Purs or Purs, I'm not sure, shared their mother's uh, account of the Wok Wok. Um, and they said that they can still remember, uh, this is all, all quotes, I can still remember my mother talking about it so matter-of-factly. She said that she worked alone on the fields and um, lost all track of time until it was dusk. Uh, and she was preparing to untether the buffalo so they could go home. Uh, which is about a one kilometer uh, of thick bushes and rice paddies away. That's she... a hike. Yeah. I mean, a kilometer is a third of a mile, so it's I guess it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, I went, like, I like to go now that it's hot for my my exercises when it starts to be a duskish out, when it's a little bit darker because it's warm, and they're usually about two and a half miles. Um, so they're... There, that's not that's not crazy. One kilometer. Oh wait, I'm wrong. Uh, a, a kilometer is is point six of the mile, so it's yeah. half a mile. Yeah, you know that's a, a you know, like yeah. a okay. seven minute walk. <laughs> seven minutes. I you're you're doing you're doing twice as you're doing twice as good as a. So seven a, a, a five minute mile is like phenomenal. Yeah, but right. you're doing half. Yeah. She said she just lit her bamboo torch when she heard the sound that went whack, 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 whack. You know, the sound of a whack, whack. Um, she unsheathed her bolo, which is a long machete-like knife, Badass. and looked up uh, and around. Uh, my mother is a strong wo- woman even at a young age, but what she saw unnerved her. She said she saw what she thought was a large, tawny-looking bird with sharp, sharp talons. Um, just a few feet... Uh, above her head, its flapping wings disturbed the trees and brushes for yards around. That would have been scary enough uh, when you're alone and it's nightfall, but you still have to remember the walk through the parts at home. What uh, stuck uh, her st- struck her though was the uh, creature's head. She said the thing had a pretty humanoid, feminine face with yellow curly hair. Uh, she described the face as looking like a doll. And its wings were that of a bird, not of a bat. Uh, and she says that by the dancing light uh, of the torches, she can still tell the thing uh, was staring at her with cold gray eyes. Um, and then she went home. So I just want to say that I found out what happened to Anastasia. What's that? It turned into a wak wak. She turned into a wak wak. Oh. Because the, the whole thing is like, yeah. you know, oh, Anastasia disappeared because... Whatever she was murdered, there's no there's no mystery about what happened to Anastasia, the last of the the Russian royalty. She's dead. We know she died. Um, I'm pretty mm. sure people found the the remains of her recent Italy. Okay. So she's she's dead. There was actually, um, Japan's kind of obsessed with the Anastasia story a little bit. Mm. Um, like there was a. Uh, a Detective Conan movie that was like literally centered around the fact that someone was the descendant of Anastasia. It weird. What? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It was weird. Um, the Detective Conan movies, uh, for those of you who don't know, Detective Conan is a show in America. It was called case closed. It's about a guy who gets, who, uh, sneaks up on a drug deal. And rather than the dealers, like the, the, the criminals just shooting him in the face, or strangling him, or stabbing him, or anything like that. 
Um, they give him an experimental drug, which should have killed him, but it caused him to become younger. Mm-hmm. Because in, like, one in a hundred cases it happens. It happens to another character in the show, too. But whatever. Um, so, basically, he's a he's a, a detective kid who's obsessed with detective stuff. And he lives with his love interest as a child. And uh, manipulates her detective father, who de- is a terrible detective... Uh, to actually solve the cases, and the father has become incredibly popular as a result. <laughs> it's a weird manga. It's it's like thirty years old now, and it's still yeah. is over. <laughs> but um, anywho, the uh, the whole humanoid face thing kind of took me for uh, a, a loop. loop, Brandon. You didn't you didn't uh, you didn't kind of you buried the lead on that one a little bit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's basically a harpy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, supposedly during the day, the Wack Wack transforms into smaller birds, um, and uses its time to carefully select and follow the prey so they're easier to catch the victim, uh, at, at dusk, dusk times. So, um, then that means that the... <sighs> okay. So, so like while it's a, a smaller bird, a, Brandon, a bird d- watching you in a tree could be a whack whack stalking you. But do they make the whack whack noise when they're in that form? No, they're disguised. Then why? Okay. Okay. So Brandon. Yes. There's a logical question I have for you. Yes. If you were a whack whack, mm-hmm. why would you do anything other than stay in the bird form, uh, the other bird form, as long as possible? And then the last second, when no one would expect you, you transform into your normal form and eviscerate this your victim. Because that's not the way of the wak wak. Okay. <laughs> I, I, supernatural beings have such complex rules. They do. <laughs> that, needs, I, they, they, that should be on a shirt. Supernatural beings have such complex... They do. Oh, my God. Um, if we ever do merch, that's, that's, that is the second one. After, like, Jeff quotes... Oh, Jeff quotes is the first. Jeff is the first. We're definitely if we ever if we ever reach a listener base that can afford that that it makes sense to buy like pay to make con- commission art for a shirt because we'll at least match the money that it will take to do it. Yeah, Jeff. There's going to be a Jeff the Mongoose shirt that I'm going to com- we're going to commission artwork for. First of all, that's just going to happen. Uh huh. And it's going to say I'm the eighth wonder. That's it. Mm-hmm. The second one is going to be <laughs> supernatural beings have very complicated rules. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think it's just going to be like an Ikea instruction manual with like a vampire head on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Uh, now I, I kind of wanted to design that. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> oh. Uh, you can, however, prevent attack by using a, a few different methods. You could sprinkle salt at your doorway, hang garlic around your house, or place a broom upside down in the doorway. And that oh. that latter one sounded kind of new to me. I heard about garlic. I heard about salt. Um, yep. So upon cursory uh, research, there's actually fairly widespread superstition around the world with different implications depending where you are. In like broom lore, there's just a bunch of broom lore, and I was unaware of it. Um, so an upside down broom in your uh, ho- uh, house may help get spirits or entities out of your house. So okay, okay. Um, I know about the horseshoe upside down, right? Mm-hmm. If you put it, if you hang a horseshoe, uh, the the U has to be up because it's supposed to catch the lock, right? Yeah, that's the whole notion. And if you put it down, it, it doesn't catch the walk, luck. Mm-hmm. What about an upside down broom scares spirits and entities out of the house? Is it just like, ooh, dirt? Oh, they're like, this person crazy. Their broom's wrong. Um, I don't know. Um, but but I'd like to talk about some other interesting f- broom facts. Um, yeah, I kind of assumed that this episode was going to be pretty broom heavy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I really tried to limit it. It's just that. There were so many things that brooms meant, and they meant different things depending where you were. Um, that uh, 
that there's a lot of marriage traditions all over the world that say if you leave a broom upside down, you'll be married soon. However, if you're Welsh and knock a broom over on your wedding day, your marriage is void. But well, if you knock a broom a... over in Italy, you will be married soon. The same in Germany. <laughs> and if you lay a broom on the floor, it's the most passive-aggressive way to tell your party guests it's time for them to get the fuck out of your house. Um, <laughs> that, okay, wait, that one? The yeah. other ones, I don't care about. That one. Right? Just, you're having, like, there's people over here you just casually walk over, and sw- so everyone can see, lay a broom on the side as a, like, get out of here, it's closing time. No, 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 you don't You don't lay it down, you just kind of knock it over. Oh, like a cat? And make no, you don't acknowledge the fact that you knocked it over, it's just on the ground now, Yeah. and it's just like, you, you're deadpan. You yeah, knock just, it over and then and walk just away. Everyone also knows, like, oh, it's time to leave. Like, <laughs> that that's, the, that's crazy. The older I get, the more these that type of thing is appealing to me. Yes. Because <laughs> I always had trouble, like, trying to find the time, the right time to leave. Because it's yeah. like, for me, uh, I'm bad at leaving. Mm-hmm. Or letting or having people leave because I always feel guilty. Like, like there's like a weird level of I have layers of guilt, Brandon. Okay. Yes. My my whole I am held up by a complicated system of guilt. Yes. And one of the complicated parts of that system of guilt is uh, I have anxiety about leaving too early and too late. <laughs> because I don't want to offend someone by leaving too early, and I don't want to offend someone by leaving too late. You're you're the you're, your body. You're the Michelin Man, but your body is made of rings of guilt. Yes, guilt and anxiety and yeah. self hatred. There's a core in there. Yeah, it's a core of swirling self hatred. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle I can move around. <laughs> Um. Oh, uh, also, witches, much like vampires, must count things. So if you lay a broom in your doorway, she must count all the bristles prior to entering. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. Brandon. Yes? Witches use brooms. Listen, don't worry about that. Witches use brooms. Don't worry about that. Do they have to count their broom bristles every single time they take flight? Oh, she's like, ah, uh, she's like... Uh, we're out of milk. Fuck, I've got to count all this sh- all these bristles before I can it. go to the store. <laughs> oh. Also, if you're single, never let someone sweep a circle around you, or you will never marry. But alternatively, if you are married, sweep a circle around your partner to keep them from cheating. Hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot more. There's pages of just broom lore. I put some on Twitter... There's oh, there was like, some. Uh, there actually, uh, you left out a few from Twitter that I liked quite a bit. Oh yeah, um, it's. Uh, let me you know. You know go back home. I'm going to your tweets. One second. Okay. Um. Da, 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 some stuff about politics. Um. Malicious broom facts. A person whose feet you sweep under will always be poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> this one's my favorite and I don't know why you didn't put this one in here um, there's more but this will be the last one I quote uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin introduced broom corn to the United States in 1725 he is said to have picked a single broom corn seed off a broom in Philadelphia uh, of a broom of a Philadelphia lady planted it and grew the first broom corn in the United States what Brandon yeah. hashtag broom facts okay can you do you know anything else about that story other than the fact that Brent, Ben Franklin was a notorious troll in his time? No. Uh, that's, okay. That's this the entire thing. That's all I know. Well, well, that's that's the whole thing. Is Ben Franklin the whole the whole Jersey Devil thing is literally because Br- Ben Franklin didn't like someone. Yeah. <laughs> and he pretended that they were dead, and that their ghost wrote a response in rebuttal to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, like man i wish 
I wish I was half as petty or, or not not petty, but like half as capable of just burning someone as Benjamin Franklin oh, yeah. was. He invented Although, a newspaper. He, yeah, he did. For the sake of just being like, uh, can we just go he, back to when there was no social media when you would like, if you wanted to get at somebody, you'd make a newspaper? Oh, yeah. The, the, the good old days. Yeah. The good old days where you make a pamphlet because you hate someone so much. Yes. And the thing is, making a pamphlet was not cheap. <laughs> like, that was back in the day. Like, you had to be at the level of annoyed when you had... F- were- you had to find a printing press. Like, imagine being yes. so mad at somebody, you'd, you'd track down a printing press. Yeah. And then you'd have to, like, knowing how printing presses work, go through all of the effort to make a pamphlet to, that just says, I don't like you. And and not only that, but you had to hand set the printing press. Yeah. So either A, you're so mad that you hand set a printing press, or B, you're so mad you're willing to pay someone to hand, hand set a printing press. And yeah. some of these pamphlets were multi-pages. Like, that's a level of commitment. Uh, that's 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 a level of being pissed off about someone that just is beautiful. Yeah. Um. Okay. So so that's where um the episode was going to end. But there was actually a very recent update to something I heard about. It's not monster related, but it's related to like... Um, oh, things. this one? Yeah. So so so. Um. A few years ago, uh, I heard about a rich art dealer who was diagnosed with cancer and he, he decided to hide a chest in the Rocky mountains worth several million dollars. Um, and the feds even raided his home for violating antiquity laws. And then he wrote poems and short stories that contained clues on where to find this chest. And five people even died looking for it. So this was, this is the one that like has the, the, the mystery, right? Like it's the, um, it's like, it's like a very convoluted poem. <laughs> Um, yeah, like I even read the poem like years ago. Oh, it makes ago. no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah, uh, and the chest itself was a ten by ten by five box for forged in bronze during the twelfth century. So this is legit ass buried treasure treasure stuff, and it was filled with like, like like that's why he vi- like violating antiqu- antiquity laws like legit ass treasure, and an actual treasure ass chest. Well. Oh my God. June 6th of this year, the chest was found. (gasps) Holy shit! That's, what, seven days ago as of recording? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, it was found. So Fen, uh, who made it uh, through his cancer, confirmed that the chest was found. um, And he said that it was, quote, under a canopy of stars in the lush uh, forest vegetation in the Rocky Mountains, and it was not moved from the spot where he'd hit it almost ten, you know, more than 10 years ago. The finder was a male uh, from the eastern United States, and for legal reasons, the Fen isn't disclosing the identity of the guy who found it. Uh, <laughs> and But he did confirm via email, and he was sent photographs you know, via email, pictures of the chest in the spot where it was laying. Um, so he did confirm that the chest was found, the contents of the chest will remain secret, and the identity of the finder are going to remain secret um, for legal reasons, right? Because there's some illegal, like, he, he, this guy, you know, he may potentially own things that you're not allowed to own. I don't know what's in the chest. And then also, legally, he would have to disclose the, the, the what it's worth. So for, for tax you know, reasons, he's, yeah. he's literally ta- this is literally tax evasion. Yeah, but it's so cool. Like it was a very the realest of real like treasure hunt. There was like code inside poems and a chest that was made out of bronze filled with like riches. Can I so, just say something, Brandon? Yes. I hate puzzles like that. <laughs> oh, they're the worst. Like when um, there is. Th- so Skyrim wasn't that bad, but the farther back you go in Elder Scrolls games, you're like, fuck, it's a riddle. <laughs> oh, Morrowind's a nightmare. Yeah. Morrowind doesn't even have a quest tracking system. No. no. I went back to play Morrowind like, oh, that'd be, and then it was like, oh, this is actually the worst now without yeah. like, heavily modding it. Oh, back in the day, it was cool as shit, but now it's like, 
actual pain to play. Oh yeah, now I'm like, listen, I'm a do- I got a house, I got like shit I got to do. Send me that riddle, but at the same time, put the location of the answer on a map with a marker and a magical path that appears in front of me so I can go directly to it. I'll fight all the stuff that's there. Yeah, I'll fight all the stuff, and I'm sure your riddle's cool, but I've got a life. And I say that having probably about 500 hours into Elder Scrolls Online. uh, (laughs) Yes. Like, like I've got shit to do. I'm not saying I'm not going to put an ungodly amount of time into playing your game. (laughs) But don't don't force me to waste the time on the puzzle. Don't force me. Exactly. I don't want to fuck around with your stupid puzzle. I'm sure I'm sure the the language you use makes perfect sense to you, but you misuse the word irony and god damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Like give me the riddle but at the same time if there's not three statues directly in front of me that's like whale, lion, lemur and then four blanks like symbols that are the exact same thing on the floors so I'm like okay, boop boop but like make it obvious or I'm not going to fuck with it. Um the, the actual secret is put house cat in all of them. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> so Do you remember I, that movie? Uh, what was it? Hot Rod? No. Um, it was Andy Samberg. Oh, that one. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and he's <laughs> he has like the animals of power. Yeah. What were those? <laughs> Um, it was, uh, let's see. I have a picture here. Uh, eagle, octopus, dolphin, fox, house cat. (laughs) (laughs) House cat's the most dangerous. The fuck? So, like, like, copy, copy image. Open chat. So I googled animals of power, and this is one of the pictures that came up. <laughs> oh. Let me see this. Oh, I'm not sharing screen now. What? <laughs> what? What? Why? It's very little. It's a cow and electric fence, and it's literal like electrical power, where there's like ground return. <laughs> I, I, I love. <laughs> Like, I, that's the most literal. I, I looked up, I was not expecting, here's. So, okay, Brandon, this is the funny, because this is, this is a very abridged, this is a very extremely abridged power diagram, right? Yeah. Um, I, it looks like they're running the, the electrical fence in parallel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but. It's just a, a, a like a, a electrical uh, amplifier source pointing to an electric fence and a cow who has lightning bolts surrounding its head. <laughs> this is fucking amazing. What? <laughs> I like I like the one with the birds. Like, see, the birds won't get hurt, but if you touch it, you're fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> He's literally animals on electric fences. Why are there so many? <laughs> the bird one is amazing. It has R underscore line. R underscore bird. <laughs> what the like, it's, like, it's res- the bird is a resistor. Well, I mean, yes, it technically is a resistor. But... <laughs> Assuming it grounds, but still. No, the bird is a resistor. Is it. Does a bird on a line affect the amount of electricity that's running through the line? Because I don't think so, right? Because they're not grounded. Yeah, they're, they're not grounded. It doesn't have to go through the bird. I mean, the bird is less conductive than the line it's going through. <laughs> like, yeah, so I'm assuming that. It, my favorite part about the bird one, though, is it's a bird standing up and then a bird doing the splits. Yeah. that's I, I, My favorite part is it actually does have R underscore bird. It really is great. And, and it's like actual resistance, like the actual symbol for resistance. Yeah. Why? I don't know. 
but uh somebody somebody took the time to draw these things i don't know what i was expecting when i looked up animals of power but it was not this and this is so much better oh uh, here's one with a sneaky fox and a chicken <laughs> oh he's getting shocked uh-huh He's getting. Oh, they have. You see, they're eco friendly. They've got a, a solar panel on their back, their electricity. Yeah. Um. Although um, I will say, I don't know how good of a uh, how much energy that that tiny solar panel is going to be generating if it's chicken size. It's yeah. I feel like the fox could overload that that particular battery. That one. I mean, really, to defeat that electric fence, you just need to like grab it get zapped once and then you're done like, yeah it's like it's not going to provide anything else it's going to charge so slowly yeah that's that's a that's a uh deterrent a one-time deterrent yeah oh god uh so next episode john and i go to oak island no we're going brandon i don't want to booked oh man so that whole oak, oak the mystery of oak island show it's so it's dumb. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Like, all right. I, I, I just the level that they they've dug to at this point, right? Like, isn't the lore behind it that it's like a pirate buried their treasure there or something like it's that? It's like a pirate buried Trevor treasure and a. I like pi, pirate buried Trevor better. It's just a guy down below with a really long beard. Like, hi, I'm Trevor. Um, but it likes like a booby trapped hole that there's stuff buried in and yeah, I don't, I just don't. Let's see. Uh, mystery treasure. It says rumors that captain kids treasure was buried there. While there is little, ev this is the Wikipedia article, by the way, while there is little uh -huh. evidence to support what went on during the early excavations, stories began to be published and documented as early as 1856. Since that time, there's been many theories that extend behind beyond that of Captain Kidd, which include, among others, religious artifacts, manuscripts, and Marie Antoinette's jewels. <laughs> uh, so, um, but yeah, like, the, the depth that they've made into that pit at this point far exceeds anything that like no one would dig a hole that is that deep to hide a treasure. the cost of excavating that deep exceeds the value of anything that could potentially be under there even though there's probably really nothing under there well i think some of the people like legitimately believe like the holy grail is under there so uh -huh. there's seven seasons of that show there are 111 episodes mm-hmm Honestly, at this point, the show is probably more valuable than what any, whatever is in the in the fucking ground. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Oak Island Interpretive Center. <laughs> oh. oh wow! This is this is not this is a it is a double wide trailer. Oh. Uh. Oh my god! It's it's a. It's a fucking museum to the Oak Island mystery. What? Come on. Why? 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 Like, uh, humans are weird. Yes. Because we expend so much energy on some of the dumbest stuff. Mm -hmm. And there are some seriously legitimate problems that we could... Like, think about all of the the mechanical engineering and... Um, all of this is so far away from the original topic of this episode. Yes. But think about all of the like potential work that has gone into this that could be applied to American infrastructure. Oh yeah, right. Like the amount of money that has gone into the money pit could be could probably fix an untold number of roads. Like if, oh, if you bridge inspectors because we do something like there aren't. The, the number of bridges we have versus the number of inspectors, I forget. The, it, it's like you should be afraid every time you go on a bridge. Oh, no, it's, that's fair. It's something like only 2% of bridges get inspected, and then a lot of them are overdue by, like, over a decade. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, literally every bridge over the New York State Thruway. Yeah. Literally, literally every bridge. People are going 80 miles an hour underneath that. Yeah. 
And if you wa- look at some of those bridges, they are rusted to shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm fully expecting one day a bridge to just collapse. One of those bridges to just collapse and just... It's over for some people. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, you know... Let's take whatever money went into, like, Oak Island and Hatchimals and put that towards infrastructure. <laughs> Man... Hatchimals could probably fix the fix American in- infrastructure with how much money it produced. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm looking at Transformers, by the way. Um, oh, okay. So you know, you know that this episode, this episode has hit the point where we're done because I got distracted by Cybertron.com and ooh, these are cool. <laughs> I, I'm very, oh. I'm very good at paying attention. I'm very excited yeah. for Devastator Two, by the way, because oh, I'm one, be. I'm one, I'm one Transformer away from completing my my Studio Series Devastator, and I can't wait to do it. Nice. I haven't done any Toy Office episodes in a while, but I might do one for that. Do one. Um. Anywho, we're just talking at this point. So, mm-hmm. um. Although I think people actually like us just talking. Why? I. I, I don't know. I read a comment from one of our our people on the Discord, which we have, and there's, there's going to be a link in the show notes. Um, and they were like, uh, it's like I'm just sitting at a, a, a dining room table talking about cryptids and weird shit with someone. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, I guess. I guess that's the demographic. That's, that's what we're hitting, trying to yeah. hit with this. Is just, it's just, it's really what this show is brandon is an excuse for me to continue to talk to you despite us both having busy lives yes <laughs> this is the whole purpose of the show is not to make money it's just to ensure that i have about an hour every other week that i can spend talking to my friend <laughs> <laughs> That's how our conversations usually go. It's usually something about monsters and then, like, Transformers and then, like, oh, let's... I don't know about this. Let's Google it real quick. Why are there pictures of just birds with resistor values? This is this is not... Like, like I cannot stress enough that neither of us is doing a character for this show. I know no. that a lot of podcasts, they have, like, someone does, assumes a character and that's how they do the whole thing. But neither of us is a character. This is literally how we interact in our day to day lives. Yeah. <laughs> like there's there's periods where you'll send me something just complete. Those videos you sent me the other day. Were oh yes. Hilarious. Yo, the dad dude, reacts so funny. Dude, when the stepdad pulled the knife. It was fantastic. And plus the guy that so there's a kid. He puts a, a giant teddy bear in his stepdad's car, and he just says, "I got it for somebody. I don't have anywhere to to put it." I'm just going to leave in your car for a few days. And then he cuts a hole in the back and climbs inside of this giant teddy bear. And the stepdad starts driving and he keeps kind of like looking in the rearview mirror and he's on the phone with his, with the, the, the kid's mom. And he's like, man, Chris, he's got this giant teddy bear. Like we need money. Well, like, what does he do? Like, and then, <laughs> and then Chris starts slowly moving as the, like just changing positions. And the guy keeps catching the bear in different positions and the, the back of, uh, the movie mirror and he, his mom goes well take it back to where he got it from and he goes I'm about to and you hear a click and Chris knows what the click is because that's when he starts yelling it's a prank it's a prank and that's when the step that turns around and he has a knife yep <laughs> he's like was... I'm about to take this bear back and just click <laughs> he just pulls a knife <laughs> I gotta say I'm impressed with the step dad's driving ability yeah that was honestly the thing that impressed me the most. There's a haunted teddy bear, and you're still driving casually while talking on the phone and <laughs> pulling a knife. The, the the shit prank was really good, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that the kid had... This, this, the stepsons had a second camera set up. Yeah. That was good looking ahead. Like, like his reaction... The, the, the stepdad's reaction was like, did you just get shit on me? <laughs> he's, he's just like, is this poop? And then, I love what he's just yelling. He's like, what are you doing? Reaching back there when you know there's not toilet paper anyway. <laughs> Which one 
very that's a very legitimate question. <laughs> and he's just banging the door. He's like, "Where's my gun? Let me go get my gun. I'm about to get my gun." <laughs> it was so good. It's. So I wonder what their relationship is outside of the. Pranks. It's fantastic. So there's 25 prank videos. Yeah. <clears throat> and they all act like this. Well, there's there's two videos that he has, and one, they're called um, it, it's called f- facts or smacks, where you have each person has a list of things like what's my favorite band, what's my favorite color, just personal information, mm-hmm. and you ask the other person. They have ten seconds to answer, and if you get it wrong or don't answer in time, you pour baby powder in your hand and get to just slap the other person. So one, the stepdad's <laughs> like, I cannot wait to play this game. <laughs> so. <laughs> So they they you know they play that, but then the the second one they have, um, cause, cause like there's even pranks where it's like, it was like what are you saying? Like don't say like that's my son. Don't what are you saying his name for? Like um, during a prank because he's pretending to be somebody else. So he just calls him his son. So you know that he like really he does actually does care about does care about him even yeah. though he, he he reacts the way he does to his pranks. But there was one in the factor smacks where he says, "Do I wish you were my mom's boyfriend?" And then they got like, and before that, it was like, what's my favorite band? Um, you know, how many pairs of shoes do I have or something like that? Yeah. And then he's just like, Chris, Chris, why are you asking that kind of question? And then um, he goes, uh, the the stepdad says, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to say yes. And then Chris goes, no. And then you just see like this look go over the dad's face. He goes, I wish you were her husband. And then you get to see this man. <laughs> He's like, what? what? Like, here, he's got the, like froggy voice, like all choked up. Is he? Wait, wait, say it again. And then Chris just pours, pour. Like, it's this guy trying to still be like the tough guy, but he's still. You can hear in his voice, he's all choked up. And Chris <laughs> is pouring baby powder into his hand. He's like, I said, no, I don't wish you were a boyfriend. I wish you were a husband. And then the big slap. <laughs> <laughs> That actually sounds like a really good relationship. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, Chris, he's like, how do you how do you say something like that and then do something like that, and then the slabs are just harder for the rest of the video. <laughs> uh, that's such oh. that's such a male relationship. Um, it's, um, I don't know. For I'm like, it's like crazy Chris one two five nine or something like I'll, that. I'll try. I'll try and add it to the, the show so notes. So I like I like highlighting people we talk about on the show, especially when I think that they're legitimately funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anywho, this has been Cryptopedia. Uh, the our web- one where he tells his dad he got somebody pregnant. He's riding in a car. What? And he just goes, "Hey, um, so what was it like when when you had your first baby?" And he's like, "Chris, why why are you asking me about that?" So they're just having this conversation, and the stepdad. Starts looking at his rearview mirror and he goes, "I," and he's like, "Let me pull over real quick." And he goes, "What? Well, I think I have a tail light out. When can you just go out in the back when I hit the brakes? Let me know if they both lay up or not, and which one's out." Chris gets out of the car. Stepdad just drives off. <laughs> 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 and, then call, and then calls Chris's mom. <laughs> it's it's a piece of art. This, oh my god! Just, mwah, uh, so awful. Oh, okay. We'll we'll definitely post the link in the show notes <laughs> to this guy's channel because he's he, the the guy is hilarious. The pranks he comes up with are just the only one that I'll say is dangerous though is the is the teddy bear one. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the rest of them are pretty non non threatening from what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> But they're, 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 yeah, nobody <laughs> almost gets stabbed in any of the other pranks. No, that's, that was a special case. <laughs> I think, I think they played the Metal Gear Solid music, the like <laughs> alert music, the wink. <laughs> um, so this has been Cryptopedia. <laughs> um, if you want to follow us, we're on CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. On email, we are CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon. There is a link in the show notes. We have three sponsors. I think you did it last week. Yes. So it's my turn this time. So we got Clay Sinclair, Marty Van Party. Marty Van Party. Marty Van Party. Party. That's a very different kind of party. 
Me, me. I bet you. You know what? I bet you Marty Von Party. Uh, he's he's done a few van parties. Oh. I mean, it's in his name. Yeah, his kind of van party is not the kind of van party you think. Like, actually, this there's a wizard cool on now. the side of the van. I'm putting. <clears throat> so imagine like a big. I'm picturing like moving box trucks, not vans. But there's um, a whole bunch of them like parked in a circle. But when you lift up the gate, like each one's got a different theme inside. That sounds, that sounds like it could be kind of cool. That actually sounds like it could be a really cool party. Like there's a jungle one, a disco one, uh, just like a cyberpunk one. And, and then like, there's the introvert one where it's just oh, a bunch yeah. of people playing games. It, it, there, there's, it's only four people because that's the number of corners in the in the van. And they just sit in the different corners and play uh, s- Switch. Yeah, they're they're all playing. Mm-hmm. They're playing together. It's yeah, just they're introverts. just like deli meats and grapes. Another one's yeah. just like cheeses and hot sauce. I think we'd have to get a refrigerated box truck for those. Yeah, they make those. I know, I know. I, I'm just saying. Um, that'll never happen. <laughs> um, and also, of course, Bird Schneider. Mm-hmm. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, <clears throat> subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, share it with friends. Share it with people. Yep. Uh, Clay told told us on the, the Discord he shared it with a WoW streamer. Oh, nice. Um, and <clears throat> the last week was our was better than the previous two weeks. So I'm giving credit for our increase in listenership to Clay this time. Yeah. We'll, we'll give <laughs> because I have oh, done. The, uh, I, I didn't do a, a bird uh, bones joke today. So let's see. Uh, bird Schneider. Um, you can, um, if you snap his arm off and bite the ends off, you can drink soda out of it. Like it's a Twizzler because the inside's hollow. Boom. Uh, I prefer red vines, <laughs> but anywho. Um, so I'm, I agree. Red vines are preferable. Yeah. Now, the reasoning I like red vines, but I now now I was about to finish, but I need to talk about red vines are the hill I will die on. Um, the reason I even found out about red vines was because of how it's made. First of all, uh, second of all, red vines have a bigger uh, are bigger, yeah, and they have a have larger. Suck hard. Yeah, they have a larger they have a larger internal um, uh, uh, area, right? Yeah. So it, it behaves more straw like, yeah, and it, it's just better. And I prefer them honestly. Yeah. When I have to drive four hours, I usually get a, a thing of red vines mm-hmm. and like one or two Arizona iced teas, and that's just my driving fuel. Nice. Um, but anywho, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Gonna be trying to do something a little bit different next week, uh, because, uh some stuff is happening but stay stay posted hopefully you'll enjoy it might not be as funny but it's going to be some content anywho (laughs) if you can say one thing about what we do it's content (laughs) it is content (laughs) um uh, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is a... <coughs> I got a frog in my throat. Crypto Brandon. I drank did all somebody, my iced tea and I'm did, dying. Did somebody tell you that they want you to be their their father? <laughs> no. No, my cat... No, my cat looked at me and said, Hello, Brandon. And then I said, oh. How do you learn to talk? Honestly, if... If my cat looked at me and said, hello, John, I'd be hurt. (laughs) I'd prefer to be known as father to the cat. Because I do so much for this goddamn cat. (laughs) I do so much for him. I picture him as like a loyal minion that, but like he's nefarious. Like, you'll be like, yes, father. Like, he'd be like, "Uh, uh, uh, Jiro, um, I'd like some jello. And he's like, yes, father. You, he comes back, gives you jello in your head. He went to Hannaford. He really assassinated the first person he saw with Jello. So like, <clears throat> he's he's very helpful. He does what you ask, and you think everything is like it's really a good. Paw. It's a really paw. up and up. Yeah, it's a monkey's paw. Yes. Um, I think he would actually just give me the Jello mix, and say you just requested Jello. <laughs> um, he, he brings you a dead horse and a grinder it's like get to work yeah <laughs> um if you want to follow me on instagram i'm at mu 2057 
My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. I've Our, been posting a bit. Of, oh. I've been posting a bit of stuff on my uh, Twitter. If you're interested yeah. in uh, video games, it might be interesting to you to see. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for feedback on some of the content that I've been posting. So be sure to send that in. Yes. And Brandon uh, might be doing some music for it. Perhaps. We'll see. Uh, Schedules. Yeah, <laughs> Schedules. But uh, I'll definitely get some, some kind of something, whether it's usable or not. Uh, I don't know. But I'll throw, it, like, like before, it will be content. <laughs> it will be content. I mean... Of the I already we I, do they exist. <laughs> I already like the the thing the sample you gave me, so I mean Yeah, I might try to make it longer. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh. I have nothing. I okay, was, our I, art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram. <clears throat> My throat, Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Things are gonna get weird.